and welcome back to Life You Imagined. My name is Nico, and today we're going to look at the book, The Hundred Dollar Startup. So as usual, I like to talk about why I choose the books that I choose and kind of how it relates to my own personal journey. Um, I think this helps to make it more relevant, at least to me, because <laughs> it's my journey. It's fine. Why would I choose this book? Obviously, the goal of everything we're trying to do, everything I'm trying to do, is to live a better life, to be happier, be more satisfied, be more fulfilled, all this kind of stuff. And being a creatively focused person is to live a life that's based off of my passions and, and my interests. So how do we do that? Naturally, being an artist, being a musician, being all these things, and I'm sure you probably are too, if you're watching this, you're at least interested in the creative side of things, or you do your own projects, you do something with crafts, or you make things, you design things, you probably want to be able to live a life where you could get this, actually do those things and survive off of them, rather than going to some shitty day job that you don't really care about and just doing your art as a hobby. At least that's what, that's what I've always wanted. That's been my big dream. I hate having to do little day jobs having to do. Watch your fucking words there, buddy. I don't have to do that. I've chosen to do the, you know, shitty part-time day jobs to free up my time. So that's my own, that's on me. Take responsibility. <sighs> yes, I've chosen to do that. Perhaps you've chosen that path as well because you don't want a career. You're fighting against the traditional system, man. I don't want to be all corporate and shit. I don't want a career. I want to do my art for a living. Yes, art guy. They all talk like that. Everyone, anyone who ever does art or music, they all talk like that. You know what I'm saying. You talk like that too, as do I. So the goal would be, how do you create a situation in which you can do the things you're passionate about, the things you're talented uh, in and that you love and actually be able to survive off of that? Now, um, I have a whole series of, of issues that, um, not about the book necessarily, but for, for myself, that make it very challenging for me to do that. I'm trying to do that right now with doing, like I love reading, I love psychology, I love life design, like I talk about this with everybody. And so honestly, if I was not recording this video, I'd probably be pacing around my apartment, talking about it to myself out loud anyway, as if I was talking to somebody. So I just figured, okay, well, might as well turn on the camera uh, and maybe someone won't care. Um, but I have no control over that. I just do it because this is what I want to do. And who knows, maybe I can turn this into a stream of income as well. But back to this. So his particular angle, his, the author, Chris, is it Guillebeau? It's got, it's French. It's got the two L's. I'm wondering if it's like a guillotine thing. It's, you don't, it's, it's, it's or kind of Spanish in that way. Guillebeau. Maybe it's Gillibau. Does he did he Americanize it? I don't know. Chris, good old Chrissy. Um, he wrote a book that is all about trying to do that same similar thing, the same similar thing, not the different similar thing. Those are very very same similar different things. <laughs> about turning something you're passionate about, something you're interested in, into uh, what he calls a micro business. So if you are a musician or an artist or a writer, you might be thinking, oh, I don't want to start a business. Why should I read books on business and entrepreneurship? And it's not to start a traditional business. You don't need to start a restaurant. That's not what you want to do. Unless that is what you want to do, then great, then go do that. But if you just want to be a person who gets to create the art that they love, whatever form that takes for you, or a performance or something, um, and you want to be able to just do that, not have to be distracted by paying the bills through things you don't want to do, uh, it makes sense to start learning about small business startups and entrepreneurship because if you want to make money from your art, you know, you, you may not like this idea if you're a very traditional, like, pure artist-y kind of guy, as I've been at many stages of my life and still have a lot of <laughs> threads of that, which I battle against, you know, the... Um, the purity, the artistic integrity shit gets get, gets me sometimes and actually makes me not live the kind of life I want to live. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. But he basically uh, goes through all the steps of the process of turning an idea that you have or something that you love step by step into something that could be a business, a small, like a micro business, as they say, 
that actually makes money. Um, he does this primarily through interviews. So he interviews a lot of people who have done this, which helps to add validity to the book, that this can be done, this has been done, that some of these methods are things that you can follow and they're a good, it's a good way to go, rather than him just saying, I don't know, I just thought of these things or I found them on the internet. Um, so he interviews a lot of people who have had traditional jobs and all that and have created on the side either like a supplementary um, income. Did I say that? Su supplementary income <laughs> or something they turned into their primary income that was a, a hobby or an interest that they grew into a small business that they now run and they can do that for, their, for the rest of their lives if they want to. So it's really cool. Uh, in that way, I, and I appreciate that. And it, it is very thorough. So he, he walks you, as I said, through like every single step. So it, each chapter is kind of the next phase of working through um, getting from where you are to actually making money as a having a, as a small micro business, a small micro business. And so he walks you through like generating ideas, choosing the best ideas, even stuff like, you know, practical stuff, building a website, branding, marketing, promotion, all these kind of things. So if you have not read any business books yet or any books on marketing and branding and any small business kind of stuff, entrepreneurship books, then I think you will get a lot out of this. It's The information is really good. However, the problem that I had problem, one of the things I noted, it's not exactly a problem. It, it, it's good. It's good. Don't worry. Calm down. <laughs> It's not that the information I don't think is bad. It's just, it feels very kind of ho-hum, traditional business advice, traditional marketing advice, traditional startup advice, because I have read a handful of uh, books in this category. And the approach to it is nothing different to me or like revolutionary, like, oh, that's a totally different way to go about it. I love all the examples of people who have done it and they talk about their process and that really does help. It's nice to see where maybe uh, areas where they struggled and then were able to fix that problem. I, I always like that. Problem solving is good, you know, finding solutions. But as I said, it feels like, yeah, I've read this before. Oh, I read this in another book. Yeah, that's kind of the tried and true traditional advice. So I kind of would have appreciated maybe some different ways to go about it or some different ways to think about it because that's one of the big issues I have with a lot of business books. The authors seem to forget that there are other types of people out there in the world that might want to go about things in a different way, that there's more than one way of accomplishing something. Not everyone is the same uh, type A, go, go, go kind of person. Some people need to do things in a different way, and I think that is kind of neglected in, in a lot of books. And it is, it's kind of neglected in this one too. And the other thing is that this is focused not necessarily on um, artists and musicians. It does talk about people doing creative things, absolutely. So there's um, a lot of crossover with creatively focused people like you and myself. But it's not focused on that. It is definitely a little more of like, you know, and, and I hate to denigrate <laughs> people who are not the creatively focused people, but it's a little more of for the everyman who does have some hobbies and things and wants to turn them into, you know, a small uh, stream of income or a small uh, micro business. So I keep saying small micro business. Is that one of those like big little things or a, 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 a big, large, I don't know, American, I mean, English adjectives are uh, strange sometimes. Um, or maybe it's just me using them poorly. So yeah, there's a lot of good stuff and there's a lot of stuff that you and I can take from this as creatively focused people. But um, another thing that I noticed that is missing from a lot of entrepreneurship books or productivity books or business books is chapters on what often uh, a lot of creative people struggle with, which is the mindset, the, the mental and the emotional side. It's not so much you're going to have a really hard time with the practical side. Uh, I'm sure you'll, if you're creatively focused, you're going to come up with a lot of ideas on how to brand and market and all that stuff once you get into the, the swing of how to do it. That's not the hard part. I think the hard part is getting over our own stupid, self-defeating emotional barriers and, and limiting outlooks and, and uh, mindsets on things, self-sabotaging shit. And I, like, for me, that's always the biggest one. It's not that I, oh, I don't know how to market something or I don't know how to build a website. I know these things. That's not the problem. It's that I fuck myself over because of my own fears and my own self-doubt, my own anxiety and my own identity comes in like, well, you're not the kind of person that does that. That's for fucking, you know, corporate 
sellout guys with business suits because that means bad. That's like the man in the gray gray flannel suit. Is that what it was back in the in the sixties? Uh, kind of rebelling against the corporate thing. They have that stereotype of the, you know, the corporate person who sucks and doesn't understand. Doesn't understand, man. It's not with it. It's not cool. So I, I have that version in my head of that kind of person sometimes too, which I don't. I'm like, I don't know where that fucking came from, but I have it. Got to deal with it. Got to work through it. But yeah, overall, like you know, again, really good. Um, good interviews. Good advice, though tried and true, though kind of traditional. Again, if you haven't read other business books, then I think you'll get a lot out of it. If you have, I don't know. And that's why. Um, I mean, some of the things will be good, but. Some of it, I think you'll skim a lot of it. You're like, okay, that's a nice idea. Blah, 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 blah. Nice idea. One of the things that I did really like, uh, one of his ideas, I think he said this early on, was that people are more willing to pay for learning how to do the thing you know how to do than the actual thing that you do. And when it comes to making money and doing you know, your, your creatively focused things, at least for me, that was kind of a big like mental shift. And I was like, because we, I think we always want to put out the the pure passion project, right? If you make music, you want to put out the albums. You want to people buy those things. If you're an artist, you want to put out the art you want to make and have them buy that thing. And I'm not saying don't do that because that's what you love and that's what makes life worth fucking living. That's your purpose. That's your meaning. Um, but at the same time, thinking about how to make money while doing those things is sometimes creating. Um, courses or teaching people or books, ebooks, or um, all these kind of things about how to do what you do is often a much more viable product than the actual thing you do. So just something to keep in mind going forward that, hmm, if I could explain kind of my process, if other people might want to do the art that I do, but they don't know where to start. Don't know where to start with the art. So would I recommend this to people? I think yes, with the caveats again. If you've already read a lot of entrepreneurship books and business books and all that, um, I don't think you're going to get as much out of it. Still, a few things might be helpful, like, oh, that's a useful way to do that. Or some of the stories might be validating, encouraging. Um, but overall, it's kind of like, yeah, it's fine. Um, if you are more in the camp of, like me, you're that creative type person, and you want to f focus more on that side of things, the passion side of things, and you're also dealing with a lot more anxiety, self-doubt, and, and more mental and emotional issues, that's big, your bigger barrier with a lot of creative people, it tends to be, and that's what you need help with, I would actually recommend a different one, one that I really like, I thought was fantastic, because it felt like to me it was really speaking toward people like myself, maybe more like you, who do deal with these things, because there's huge chapters on mindset. And this is making a living without a job. This one, uh, to me, uh, I really enjoyed, like a lot. I thought this was great. And the fact that she opens with stuff about mindset and she's focusing on, like this, it's a similar concept, um, $100 startup, uh, but it seems to be more focusing on people and who are the more creative side of people who do struggle with this, who don't think in a more business way. And that's all foreign to them. So she does a really good job of kind of taking you along that path and making it not feel like it's a big sellout bullshit thing. And it's, no, no, don't worry. This can be cool. This can be great. Um, and talking you through some of those mental and emotional things. I'm not saying it's going to solve everything for you, but it, it's, so I, this one I thought was wonderful. I really, really liked this. Um, the big unique thrust of this was the title, the hundred dollar startup. And it really is, it's a, it's a lot of that same basic business advice, but it's about doing it on the cheap. It's about not having to invest too much to get your business off the ground, which is a good thing to know. So that's why I said there are aspects of this. I think that this will be beneficial. Overall, this one, if you're going to get one, <laughs> I know it's just for some reason between these two, starting your own creative uh, business or micro business or whatever. So far, I would tell you, do this one. It's more for us pathetic, uh, self-sabotaging, mentally unbalanced creative people. So... But still good. So anyway, there you go. Recommended with caveats. Otherwise, get making a living without a job. Thanks for watching as usual. Uh, if you're interested in checking out either of these books, you can see them at the Life You Imagine website, lifeyouimagine.com. That's pretty straightforward. Or is it? Or is it? And uh, I have links to Amazon. You can check out the books there. And yeah, there are affiliate links. 
and I get a million dollars every time you click the link. So thanks again for watching. This is Life You Imagined. My name is Nico, and I will see you next time. Hey, welcome back. My name is Nico. This is Life You Imagined. That's inverse. It's very important that I do this in the exact perfect order, otherwise this video will explode. Can I animate it so this just goes bing? It has to go on its side. Do that. Or just continually rock it back and forth with a starburst behind it. Buy now, buy now, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. Thank you. Viva le Sherman, viva Quebec. So I guess as usual, oops, let's not do that. <laughs> hey, you wanna be a better person? You wanna live a better life? Sweet. Make sure you hit subscribe on Life You Imagined YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit that fucking notification bell so you're always up to date with all the newest offerings from Life You Imagined. Don't forget to go ahead and hit like on the video and share with all your friends. Leave a comment with all your fucking useless information because I'm never going to read it. Oh, and make sure you go over to lifeyouimagine.com and check out everything I have over there. Look at me. Buy my stuff. Do everything I want you to do. Sales, marketing, promo. Buy my stuff. Buy it. Look at me. Pay attention to me and everything I do. I'm insecure. <laughs>